at Durban Harbour. Just collecting some prawns quickly. And what we're doing is we're looking for holes like that. We're just pretty much sucking it up. And that is basically what we're looking for. Remember, we only allowed 50 of them, no more. You gotta keep count of these lovely prawns that we're actually catching here. Look at that, lovely bronze beam bait. And stone beam alike. You just suck it up, leave it. Obviously the little ones we just leave, and then the big ones are the ones that we're looking for. That's the size we're looking for, and we leave the small ones. Look at the lovely size of those prawns. What are you looking for? Okay, on this episode, what we're doing is we're fishing for bronze bream. It's almost the middle of August now. Our bream only start at this time of the year. Normally October being the prime month for us, but let's see if the bream are around. I'm using my BG 10 foot 6 with my BG reel, 20 pound uh, gator braid. I'm just rigging it up here. This is a three piece BG rod. In other words, it comes in three pieces. It's got a lovely tip action. Absolutely ideal for catching bronze bream, paddle tail, throwing spoon. I'm just going to quickly do this. And all I'm doing is putting the line through the eyes and I'm going to put some bait on and we're going to see how it goes from there. The nice part about this rod is the guides are small so there's a lot of contact with the actual blank so you get more sensitivity out of it. My BG reel, this one here is the 3000, 20 pound braid like I said. What I'm doing with this trace is doing a Panama knot onto a swivel. Here we go, it's a little power swivel. basically just pull it through like that, there we go, we'll cut off the tag end of the braid, attaching my leader, then I'm basically got my helicopter rig which is a swivel, two little beads on either side of it so it rotates around like that, gummy stop, float and my hook. This is a mustard hook that I'm trying out, it's a little fly fishing hook that we use um, it works very well for tiger fish and that, obviously the bigger version of it. So I just want to see whether this mustard hook is actually going to work for the bream. Just something different today that I'm going to try out. Lovely prawns from Atcan Marine again, as usual. You can feel they're full of oil. There we go. Just lightly cottoning it up around the top there. It's a bit smaller than what I do like. Uh, this one here happens to be a number four. This time of the year, I'm not too sure whether we've got small fish or big fish. Yeah. There we go, there's my bait already. So basically, what we've chosen is literally two hours before low tide and two hours of the push. Most of the bream will come on the push, but at the moment we're just speculating where they are. The conditions are absolutely phenomenal. It's a 12 o'clock low tide. Flat, calm sea today. The water is very clean, not too much movement. I would prefer more of a northeasterly, but it's fine. Um, overcast, bream always like an overcast uh, cloud cover like this. And we're going to see what happens in the next couple of minutes. See if there's any bream here, otherwise we're going to move. It's always good to just test an area and walk, test an area until you actually find where the fish are feeding. And that's what we're doing. I've got a bait in. Debbie, a friend of mine, is over there. She's got a bait in the water. And then I've got about four other guys to the left of us also trying for a bream. So we'll see if there's any bream here. If there is, we'll stay. If there's not, we'll walk further down to better spots. Better reef. These are more pinnacle rocks as well. So we'll see what happens. That was my 
my first throw, the water is ice, ice cold. And I got stuck in a rock. At least that way I know I'm throwing in the right area. But let me go put another trace on and try again. Okay, what I'm doing here basically is I'm gonna just use a, another prawn, turn it inside out. So I think with this colder water, I think these bream actually want a bit of cracker with the bait. So let's just try that quickly. Grab one of these lovely prawns that we pumped early on. And all we do is just lay it next to it. And basically just a little bit of cotton around the head. Around the body like that. And there we go. There's a lovely cracker and prawn combo. Let's see if the bronze beam don't want that. Well, folks, it's time to kick it old school. Uh, so you can feel cool. <laughs> Give it to me, baby. Yeah. Okay, that was my second throw, and I definitely had a bream bark there. Definitely a bream. And that's what happened. Had him on for about two seconds there. Put me off. Small hook. Small hook. Bite. Keep it for bite. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you have. Have Not our target species, but there we go. This is a. I've had about 10 throws and we just moved a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. There doesn't seem to be too many fish around. Like I said, it's the beginning of the bronze beam season. Uh, besides one little quarantine that was caught, there's a nice little rock over here that's sucking a bit of sand behind it. And I'm hoping we might get a fish there or we might get a fish just in that little hole over there. I don't know if you can see. In that corner where that little rock sticks out, I'm going to throw one at a funny angle there. It's not so good I'm going to get stuck. So that's, you're not getting stuck, you're not catching bronze beam. That's where I'm going to cover next bait. The more I sit here, the more I can see that water looks so much better. Just too much sand coming out now, sucking out here. I've just thrown it in what I would call the G-spot for bronze bream now. It's absolutely awesome water working there. But I'm going to get cut off. I promise you now, if I hook a fish, I'm going to get cut off. If I don't get a bite or a fish, I'm still going to get cut off and I'm going to get stuck in the rocks. There's just so much rock there and it's looking so, so good. Isn't that little thing? As it reef runs out there, just at the back there, on there, right in there, in that little hole. It's absolutely phenomenal. One thing you always want to remember when you're doing this, that you mustn't put any cotton over the actual hook itself. That must still stay nice and proud. bream are feeding it's here at shotgun basically we've had two pulls already and duffed both of them so now I'm just I've just changed my hook back to the chinoo hook so I wasn't happy with that other hook I want to see what happens now
point. There's something about these moray eels. They're very, very aggressive. They've got some huge teeth. Easiest way to handle them is just so grab him by the tail if you can. Okay. You hold him like that. And you can put him back in the water. Bream in 
title and must all fall bream, getting cut off, reef off. Just one of those things when fishing in amongst all these rocks and that there. But guys, thank you very much for joining us. See you next time on ASFN.